Hello everyone, this is Matthew Harrison with TheBottleReview.com. I am a college student in Massachusetts, and I'm a lover of wine, ale, and scotch. As you can see from my note here, TheBottleReview.com is turning 10, sort of. This is my 10th wine review video. I've done more videos overall because I've also done scotch and ale and a how-to video, but this is my 10th wine review video, so that's pretty exciting for me. Hopefully, I will do at least 10 more, if not 100 more. Um, we'll see how long I can afford to keep doing this and how interested everyone is in seeing these videos. So, if you're watching this, please leave me a comment and tell me how I can make these videos more interesting to you because I want to give people a reason for watching these other than because they know me. I want this to be educational and informative for people and maybe even a little bit entertaining. So without further ado, let's get into the wine. When I went to the liquor store tonight, I decided I was really in the mood for a really fruity, sweet, but also full-bodied and rich wine. And I didn't want to spend too much money. So can be a little tricky finding that combination of characteristics in a wine. But I thought to myself, when I think of a fruit bomb of a wine, what do I think of? I think of Australia. And I went over to the Australian section, expecting I would find a Shiraz or something similar. But instead, the tasting notes for this Cabernet Sauvignon sort of jumped out and appealed to me. So, I went with Rosemount 2008 Cabernet Sauvignon. It was, I can't see that, but it was $10. And it doesn't actually say anything on the back here other than it's Cabernet Sauvignon from Australia. 13.5% um, alcohol by volume. And it's got this weird round at the top but square at the bottom bottle shape here so that's a little interesting it's been in the decanter for um about two and a half hours now you can see it and it's really like humidifying the decanter it's really steaming it up as it opens up so that's that's a little weird all right let's give it a pour Okay, it's pretty dark red. You know, it's ruby on the edges, but it's dark red overall. Looks, I'd say, medium to thick bodied, closer to medium. If you can see. Okay, let's give it a smell. Definitely sweet. I think this is going to be just what I wanted. I think this is going to be a fruity over the top, fruit balmy wine, which is good because that's what I'm in the mood for. A little bit of, uh, you know, the alcohol components comes out there. But it's very fruity, very berry-like. Red berries all the way. Definitely strawberries. Really big, ripe strawberries. Borderline overripe strawberries, in fact. Yeah, it's very sugary, sweet, almost candy-like. Strawberries, some raspberries. Some cherries. Yeah, like maraschino cherries. Very intriguing, very delicious, very candy like. Um, I'm excited for this wine. And I'm going to be spitting this wine because I'm recording a few wine reviews at once. 
to get them done before I have a busy week. So unfortunately, I have to spit this one out. Feels good in the mouth. It feels rich. A little tannic. It's definitely sweet and fruity. There's a huge red delicious apple component to this. and I get every bit of the strawberries and cherries and raspberries that I got on the nose. A little bit of spiciness to it, but it's mostly the sweet, bright red fruitiness. On the finish, there's a, a hint of inkiness. Just a hint. Uh, if, you, if you've ever left wine in the glass for like two or three days and it really starts to, you know, evaporate and get funky, if you think of that sort of vinegary, inky smell that you get, there's just a tiny bit of that on the finish of this. Just a tiny bit, though. But mostly it's really ripe, red, delicious apples, strawberries, cherries, raspberries just the right amount of tannins. I like it. I like it a lot. It's not as, you know, over the top fruity as the jam jar which I reviewed several episodes ago. But it's definitely fruity and sweet. But it's also balanced. It's got the acidity and the tannins right here in my mouth. So it's not, you know, a fake candy lake wine. It's got a really good amount of fruit and a really good amount of tannins. It's nice and balanced, just what you want out of a wine like this. Good Cabernet Sauvignon. I also have a cab from Chile that I hope to review soon. I thought about doing it with this wine so I could compare the two different kinds of Cabernet, but I decided I'd do separate episodes because Chile and Australia are two very different wine producing regions. Um, giving this wine a letter rating. I really like the balance. This is almost exactly what I was in the mood for. Good, good, good red apple, red apple flavor. I can still taste it actually, the red apples. Ten dollars. I'm gonna give it an A minus. You know, it'd go well with dinner, but I would actually recommend drinking this wine just by itself. It's got a lot of flavor going on. You really want to enjoy that on its own. $10, great price, A minus, Rosemount Cabernet Sauvignon 2008 from Australia. Well, thank you all again for watching. 10 episodes of Wine Reviews in. Let me know what you'd like to see in the next 10. Let me know what you wouldn't like to see in the next 10. I want to know both what you like and what you hate. And if you think I suck and you want me to go away and shut up, tell me that too. All valid criticisms. Criticisms. Until next time. Cheers.